Hello, and welcome back to Project Finance Modeling for Renewable Energy course, and in this lesson, we will start working on project finance debt ratios. And the first ratio that we will be modeling will be the debt service cover ratio, or DSCR, which is the ratio of cash flow available for debt service to the scheduled debt service. We covered the definition of the DSCR in the previous lesson, and if you missed it, I recommend you watch it before continuing with this lesson. Once we have the DSCR modeled, we will work on the DSCR lockup flag. The lockup flag will be indicating the times when our DSCR coming out of the project is below the required DSCR, breaching the DSCR covenant. And this lockup flag will be used to lock up the dividends payable to the project sponsors. After DSCR lockup flag, we will work on the DSCR default flag, which will be used to check if the project is in default or not. First, we have to model the scheduled debt service and the scheduled debt service will be the sum of the interest payments and scheduled principal repayment. So let's bring these two items over here. The interest payment is in row 80. Let's copy the whole row and let's paste it to the row 96. The scheduled principal repayments is in row 90. Let's copy the whole row and let's paste it to the row 97. The scheduled debt service will be the sum of the interest payment and scheduled principal repayments. So, we've got our scheduled principal repayments, and in the first operations period, we only pay interest because of the grace period. And now we can model our DSCR, since we have both the scheduled debt service and the CFADs. First, let's bring our term loan tenor flag over here. Term loan tenor flag is in row 52. Let's copy the whole row and let's paste it to the destination row 100. Next is the cash flow available for the debt service, which we have on this sheet. And it is in row 15. Let's copy the whole row. Let's go back to our destination row and let's paste it to the row 101. The scheduled debt service we have just modeled in row 98. Let's copy the cell D98 and let's paste the link to the cell D102. So, what we want to do is to calculate DSCR only during the term loan tenor. We will use the if function. If the term loan tenor flag in the cell I100 is 1, then we want the ratio of the CFADs to the debt service, which is the cell I101 divided by the cell I102. Otherwise, we want NA. So, we've got our DSCR. Now we can model the DSCR lockup flag. The DSCR lockup value is 1.05, according to the case study. So if the DSCR from our project falls below this value, the dividends will be locked up. Let's link to the DSCR in row 103.
For the DSCR lockup flag, we will say if the DSCR in the cell I107 is less than the DSCR lockup value in the cell E106, anchor it, then we want 1, otherwise we want 0. So, we've got our lockup flag, and it shows that the project's DSCR is significantly above the required DSCR. We want to do the same for the DSCR default flag. The DSCR default value is 1, according to the case study. We will need our DSCR, and we can copy the row 107. Let's copy the whole row, and let's paste it to the row 111. For the DSCR default flag, we will use if function again. So, if the DSCR is below the default DSCR in the cell E110, anchor it, then we want 1. Otherwise, we want 0. Let's copy the formatting of row 108, and let's paste it to row 112. Let's change the color of the cell's content to black, since we are not importing this. So, we've got our DSCR lockup and default flags, and we don't have any lockup or default event in the P50 case. Let's change the scenario selection to P99. We can see that now in P99 case, we are in breach of the DSCR lockup flag. Since our cash flow for debt service is equal to the debt service in P99 case, our project's DSCR is lower than the required DSCR of 1.05. That is all for today's lesson, and in the next lesson, we will work on the loan life cover ratio.